Russell and Dave Bryan right along ringside. Son of a gun, we got a lot of news and a lot of wrestling lined up today, David. I tell you, we indeed have a studio full coming up here today. We've got a six-man tag team match. We've got an eight-man tag team match. Just some of the folks you'll be looking at. Uh, the Midnight Rockers, uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Rock and Roll RPMs will be here. Superstar Bill Dundee, the Nasty Boys, Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez, Jerry the King Lawler, Jimmy Jack Funk, more coming up You mean up all today. of that today? Yeah, that's not even all oh, of it. I'm going to tell you well. Oh, that's not even all of it. Good night. We got, I know we got two new champions that we'll be right. talking to today. I guess we better get going because we're going to get all that in. We're going to have to get it all. Be back in just one moment. Interesting, Dave, on one side of the ring, we're going to be seeing two singles champions together, the Southern Tag Champ and the brand new Mid-America Heavyweight Champion. We're talking about Bobby Jagger and Jimmy Jack Funk, and we're ready for the introduction, David. All right, this match is going to be one fall, ten-minute time limit. Introducing from Austin, Texas, Ricky Fontana and his partner out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, John Paul. They have a total weight of 451. Going against him across the way, out of Amarillo, Texas, Jimmy Jack Funk and his partner out of Kansas City, Kansas, the hangman, Bobby Jaggers. This match is one fall, 10-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Jimmy Jack Funk has got that uh, cowbell on the end of that hangman's noose, and bell time, we're ready to go as John Paul starts it out with the hangman. Jagger is making a tag, and Jimmy Jack Funk in there. Oh, John Paul round behind, wrapping up that left arm. Welcome to a real wrestling match, he is saying right now to Jimmy Jack Funk. There's a little hair pulling by Funk, a lot of hair pulling. John Paul goes by his knee in the back by Bobby Jagger. Good sized team, this Funk and Bobby Jaggers, uh, they both of these guys, if you look at them, they are large. Here comes Jagger, who drops down hard on John Paul. John, who has been looking real good of recent, takes a big elbow from Bobby Jagger. Retag on Jimmy Jack Funk. John Paul battling. He came out of there with a right hand. Jimmy Jack Funk has him up in the air. He flexes him. Mm. John, John needs to whip over there to his partner, Ricky Fontana. Let him get in there. Tag is made on the other side of the ring. The hangman, Bobby Jagger's back in. Jagger's a rugged individual. Tag is going for a reverse neck breaker. Yeah. He couldn't get it, no. He ends up kind of bulldogging uh, John Paul down to the mat and then dropped down with the upper arm. John Paul does get the tag, and this is our first look at Ricky Fontana. Ricky's first entrance into the ring is one he will remember but not cherish. On the shoulder, Big Jimmy Jack Funk drives that shoulder into his knee. And he's got Ricky Montana down there on the mat. Stomps right on his face as he comes up. Tag again to the hangman and Bobby Jagger is coming into the ring. Boy, it has been mostly Jaggers and Funk. Since the opening bell, which was two minutes, 35 seconds ago. Yeah, as it stands right now, it looks like it's all over but the one, two, three, because Jaggers and Funk have just been totally dominant. And as we indicated, two singles champions as a double team on Ricky Fontana. Southern tag champ is Jaggers and the Mid-America champ is Jimmy Jack Funk. Man, he took that Fontana. I don't believe it. He whipped him around in midair. Fontana weighs over 200. Not an easy pass. Three minutes, eight seconds to tie. So the fate.
favorite team of Jaggers and Jimmy Jack Funk came through and they defeated John Paul and his partner Ricky Fontana. We're going to get uh, Jimmy Jack Funk over here. He, uh, I don't know, I'm sure that it was taken. I'm going to teach that punk a lesson because I'm the toughest man in the sport of wrestling today. I took that little blue blood sissy and I taught him a lesson he won't forget. Isn't that right? Let me clarify and say that I'm sure you're talking about Jed, uh, Jeff Jarrett. Uh, he's a guy uh, that went in and took Jeff Jarrett's Mid-America title away, but he gave you quite a scrap, and I'll tell you enough so that they have rescheduled Nobody ever gave me a scrap. He's a punk, and I'm a punk. And that's the biggest difference of all. I'll tell you what. He wants a rematch. That's right. Well, you're going to get an interesting head. Yeah, but with two referees. I don't care if there's 200 referees. He can't even touch me because I'm the toughest man who ever walked in this place before. You understand me? Well, you got a rematch coming up. Two referees, and uh, that may have a distinct. He's going to learn to regret. Hearing the name Jimmy Jack Funk. Okay, you hear it, Jimmy Jack Funk, the new Mid-America champion. He did take the title away from Jeff Jarrett and is that new champion. We're going to take time out. Be back in just a moment. Evansville Coliseum, Wednesday night. What a night of action. A little bit, I'll be giving you the entire card, but let me tell you one of the matches you're going to enjoy. AWA Southern Heavyweight title will be on the line when the champion, the hangman Bobby Jaggers, goes against the guy that held the title longer than anybody, Jerry the King Lawler. Well, it's like I told you before, Lance, Jerry the King Lawler has not held the title longer than anybody because I've never been beat for this title. On different occasions, Lawler's been beat by quite a few men. Well, Lawler, when you come to Evansville, Daddy, come loaded for bear. I'm not going to run from you. I'm going to come right straight across the ring. I might slap you across the face to get your attention. But then I'm going to give you a wrestling lesson, Daddy. And when it's all done and clear in Evansville, the people in Evansville are going to see why you're a legend and why I'm the future. Well, that's exactly what the old thing is about, and we'll be finding that out when it takes place in Evansville on Wednesday. Ooh, what a final match coming up. Listen, as you look a little later on, you are going to find Bill Dundee will be picking up a brand new partner for this match, and not the littlest guy in the world. Listen to this. 400 pounds. It ain't going to help, it ain't going to help, it ain't going to help for all those chicken kids in Evansville as long as they keep trusting on Bill Dundee for their hero. There ain't going to be no Big Bubba or Big Buddha. There ain't going to be nothing but tortillas and Manny and I are going to eat them and you and the people are going to be in the middle and we will have you for tacos. That's what it's all about. <laughs> no fucking Mr. Microphone. Ignorantville, USA, as I notice, has a lot of ignorant people. I'm talking about Hoop Hysteria, Indiana. And I promise you one thing, when the authenticity hits down, you will realize Bill Dundee, you can have King Kong because you know what's faster than a speeding bullet and more powerful than a locomotive? The Mexican Connection coming yeah. at you straight ahead and never gonna go down because we are bad. It's going to be a scrap. You want to make your plans to be out there and see all of that action Wednesday. Yeah, I recognize a turn to the bad, that is to say, he ended up losing the uh, belt. Talking about Jeff Jarrett, Jeff, good to have you out here, partner. Uh, can't change the facts. The facts are that the championship belt is now around the waist of Jimmy Jack Funk. Well, Lance, you're exactly right. Uh, Jimmy Jack is the new holder of the Mid-America belt, and uh, it's no secret to you, and it's no secret to uh, the fans. Uh, that was my first singles title, and uh, I felt like I worked long and hard to get that belt, did. and... Uh, it seems like if I have to lose it in a match like this, well, uh, you know, if anybody was there and watched that match, if there would have been two referees, I believe uh, the, the tide might have turned. I'm not saying I would have beat him, but I believe I'd had a lot better chance. The referee wasn't there. Uh, I had him down, I felt like, for more than a three count. But uh, that's just how the, that's how the tables go. But uh, this week, I got uh, two referees in the match, and... Uh, 
If he beats me, I'll get up and say, Jimmy Jack Funk, you're the better man. But, brother, I don't believe that's going to happen, and I believe I can get that belt back, man. Well, the title will be back on the line. You'll get your return bout, but there will be two referees, two referees. and that'll be interesting. Thank it you, certainly Lance. should be a fair opportunity in there. Jeff Jarrett, and he is a long way from being uh, out of this business. That's just because he lost one particular match in there. We uh, told you a little while back Jeff had been picked uh, for a particular poster, and we've got some information on it right now. We had a lot of people asking about it. Take a look at this. jeans, broad shoulders, and blonde hair. Wow, now that's a poster. To order your Jeff Jarrett poster, call 1-800-336-2600. That's 1-800-336-2600. Save COD charges by having your credit card ready, or send a check or money order in the amount of $10 to Jarrett Poster, Post Office Box 3020, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. Allow two weeks for delivery. Okay! be taking a look now at the king in action and he'll be going against well let's get the official introduction david all right he'll be going against the blue knights the blue knights from parts unknown weighs in at 237 pounds the king taller but weighing a couple of pounds less 234 pounds out of memphis tennessee the King, Jerry Lawler. One fall, 10-minute time limit. The referee is going to be Jerry Calhoun. Okay, we don't know a whole lot about the Blue Knight. As a matter of fact, let's make it honest and say nothing, to be honest with you. So, he starts right off. He's going to... Uh, I know he's in trouble now. Yeah, he, he just gonna... hit the King with a right fist. <laughs> he wants to start that kind of action. That's not exactly the kind of action you ought to be starting. Whoa. I mean to tell you, he boomed him with that right hand. Lawler from behind puts the blue knight. This could be it, Dave. Oh, I hope we got a standby match ready because that one didn't take very long. It took 29 seconds, and there's a lesson here. When you walk into the ring against the king, don't hit him in the face with a right fist. 29 seconds. Referee Jerry Calhoun and Lawler, Lawler said, hey, I didn't really get a good workout here. Can we go at it some more? And the referee said, get out of here. You got the one, two, three. And the Blue Knight will be heading back to the dressing room. And his, uh, his first appearance right here on Championship Wrestling was not the most impressive one in the world. Uh, as David said, I think he did the wrong thing. I think he, he clubbed the king with a big right hand, and that was not the way to start the match, partner. Coming out right now, bad company, Paul Diamond, Pat the knockoff. Uh, okay, Paul. You know, we've been talking to a lot of people, and uh, they've been asking us just what prompted our actions last week. Well, and, um, they're talking course, about your falling out with the commission and all. And, exactly uh, right. Now, if we recall the events of last week, first of all, there's... Fergie and Bass, who ran their mouths right, they wanted Dundee and Lawler so bad they couldn't wait till they got in the ring. Once we got in there, we couldn't beg them to tag in, first of all. Well, you guys were in there all the time. Right. Sure. So we stayed in there the whole match. Finally, when he got a chance, Fergie pulled out a chain, and what happens? He knocks out my partner. And then, Prince, that low wife, right? He blames us for losing. Now, Prince... I know we had a good thing going, and when the commission first came up, it sounded like a great idea. But as things wore on, things started to go down. He did nothing about it. Prince, let's face it, you're just a low wife. You never did anything for us. You now, mean all you the big promises he made there never you go. came through? You know, uh, we were the champions, and we earned it. Yeah. Now, once we lost our championship, he couldn't provide the necessary matches for us to get him back. But he still collected his money. Well, we're not going to go for that. And of course, by any means, we're not going to go for anybody pushing bad company around. So we had to take care of things, you know. And uh, Prince, 
You didn't do it for us. You didn't do it for anybody else in that commission. And I know everybody's mad at you, not just us. So, yeah, but when you... something right now. Without me, you nothing but sucker rate preliminary bomb. And without me, you going right back to being curtain jerkers once again. Let me tell you something right now. You two scrubs was the weak link in the commission. I didn't get your big matches because you had a losing streak this long. I can't work miracles, suckers. So you think the commission is on solid ground, right? That's right. Let me tell you something right now. We so solid, baby, they call us the Rock of Gibraltar. Because ain't nothing, ain't nothing gonna put us down. We gonna hold up together, and you two bombs definitely ain't gonna make no difference. That's right, they'll fix the whole well, problem. You know, everybody knows, Prince, that you were the cause of us losing the match last week. Well, if you think the commission is so solid, we got a little surprise. We got a buddy of ours that just might take care of you next time we meet your two funds. Well, you guys have got match coming up in there, and of course the problem with that is you always got three over here. What is this? Another little defection from the commission. This ain't nothing but dissension on your part, Lance hey, Russell. You calls and stuff like this. You've been putting bugs in their ears. What's going on, brother? Hey, yeah, brother. I'll tell you what's going on. I'm tell, I'll tell, talking about all the smoke you've been blowing up people's rear ends. Let me tell you, hot shallow promises, promises about titles. What do you mean, Let me tell you, sir, you know what I mean, chump. Hey, you know what I mean, chump. Let me tell you, sir, you know what's the matter with me. You promise us the world. You promise us all this stuff. All that is is like dangling a piece of poison meat in front of a starving dog and just waiting for him to take a bite, brother. Let me tell you something. You made all these promises. Promises titles, promises this, and I worked with you. I wrestled with you, brother. I know your tactics. I know how you win. What do you mean, man? All these promises, brother. Movies, commercials, all this garbage. It's nothing but a bunch of trash and lies, brother. And uh, the bottom line, you work there. took you up, man, from mediocre and made you the superstar you is today, fool. You give you nothing but a bunch of trouble and a bunch of hot air. I've never seen more wind, so much wind blowing in your hurricane down in Florida. Lance, I know bad company can take care of these two bums. And speaking of the rock of Gibraltar, Bobby, you gotta be facing this right there Monday night because he's gonna be right in our corner. We're gonna finish you what up. Do you mean Monday night in your corner? Hey, hey, next, oh, next opportunity night, baby, I gather know. that... Mr. Bubba will be in the corner with bad company when they go against Bass and Fergie. So we're going to have to wait and leave and see how that one turns out. And it looks like it's not all as good as you think it is. Hey, let me tell you something, Lance Russell. This don't mean nothing because them ungrateful losers, you're going to rule the day you ever left my camp because you suckers are finished. Okay. Well... We're going to take time out right now. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. My friend, I first want to remind you the next Thursday in Paola, Indiana, Championship Wrestling is boogie in that way, boy. At the junior and senior high school, you'll see lots of action sponsored by the Optimus Club. That's next Thursday, Paola, Indiana. Now, how about Wednesday night right there in the Evansville Coliseum? Nasty Boys Brian Nobbs will be going against the Black Prince. Billy Travis will be facing the fabulous one, Steve Kern. AWA Southern Tag Title with the title of the Midnight Rockers against the RPMs putting up a diamond ring worth a thousand bucks. That'll be a dandy return Mid-America title. Two referees this time when Jimmy Jack Funk goes against Jeff Jarrett in, in the defense. AWA Southern heavyweight title. The King will be challenging hangman Bobby Jaggers. And then the final bout is going to be a dandy of a tag match when the raging bull Manny Fernandez, Hector Guerrero, go against Bill Dundee and his partner will be Big Bubba. Stay tuned and you'll see why. <laughs> Go 
Auditor Boss winner. Team of the 80s, Stephen Hutton. Right now, we'll see what he has to say when the match is over here. This match is going to be one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing at a total weight of 673 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, Keith Robertson. And from parts unknown with their manager, boss winner, Rough and Ready. And going against him, a total of 782 pounds from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Jerry Sag and Brian Nobbs, the Nasty Boys, and their partner out of Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. One fall, ten minute time limit, Jerry Calhoun, the referee for the six-man tag team match. Bell is sounded and we're ready to go. That's ready out That's ready. of the ring, going against the superstar, Bill Dundee. Boy, looking at the nasty boys with that war paint on, they really look something the way they're painting their faces up, huh? Well, they do. The new nasty boys. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Look at the action over there on that side of the ring, would you? Brian Nobbs is ready. Body slam. He makes the tag on the other of the nasty boys, Jerry Sag. Sags him down with that big leg. There's a cover. He's just holding him down. Reddy kicks out of it at the two count. I think Jerry Sag thought he probably could hold him there for a three count. Sag made, and here comes Bill Dundee. A superstar. He's pulling on the mask. Reddy gets under the rope. Now he's back in the ring. Tag on Ruff, and he makes the entry to go against the superstar, the third man on this side of the ring. The biggest of the three individuals over here is Keith Robertson. He hasn't entered yet. Coming across the way, the biggest of the three on the other side, Brian Nobb, and the big elbow puts Ruff down on the deck. Boss Winters, the manager of Ruff and Ready, outside the ropes, looking in. Big knee to the midsection. Hmm. Well, I noticed Robertson got down off the apron when uh, when that one occurred. I, I, I think he was saying, please don't come over here and tag me. Or <laughs> Who needs a tag? No. Look at Sag just picking him up. Backbreaker across the knee. Counts at one, two, at the two count, he kicks out of it. Boss Winter yelling and screaming about it. He said he was pulling his tights pulling in order to hold tight, it down. Yeah. And Dundee shovels him in. Brian Knob picks him up. Jerry Sag up on the rope. This could be it. Bang. And he peels him right off of Knob's shoulders after the tag. One, two, three, and that is going to be. Keith Robertson never did get in the ring. Never did. As uh, Reddy started out, Ruff took over, and then they kind of double team, almost a triple team, but they ended up with a one, two, three. The winner, Will Dundee, the nasty ball. Team of the 80s goes down to defeat in two minutes, 22 seconds. Now they're holding back boss winner. Yeah, a few words between he and Dundee. Hold me back and don't you dare let go. Yeah. Okay. That music indicates, obviously, that Hector Guerrero is not too far away. And here he comes. Guerrero and the new international heavyweight champion, Manny Fernandez. Well, you literally people, you all want to know what that song says. It says... To dance the bamba, to dance the bamba, you stop on a gringo's head, you stop on a gringo's head. That is not what it says. Listen to that, Russell, you all see, I still got my Hector's hair remover. Oh, please man. send $30, please. No checks, no money orders, because I need the pencils. Please send $30 to your local station, and everything will be taken care of. Now here comes Bill Dundee, Jesus. Bill, we need you to grow a little bit more. We need to use you for shining our boots here. They use you as a stump. Jesus Christ, what is going on around here? People are screaming. Everybody's saying, but nobody's doing anything. Let me say one thing. You can come and you can do and do what happens. It happens. But Dr. D, that was your fault. It wasn't my fault. 
You know, lads, I've got a I will take that I want to show no, you. No, 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 we don't want to see anything hey. about that. You know, Mr. Microphone, I know it's your pleasure. You waited all week to see one of the most awesome sights in your life. You know, the raging bull Manny Fernandez, when he came here the first time, I told you, you hold the mic, you shut your mouth, we do the talking, just like we do it in the ring. You understand that? Bill Dundee coming around here, running this yacht. You know, when this area realizes that you need men to wrestle, not boys, baby, because boys don't like rock and roll, and I'm not a nice boy. So when I start rocking and rolling, a lot of people start leaving. So I promise you one thing, Bill Dundee, when uh, the Mexican connection comes together, you're going to realize one thing. We are awesome. We're totally the dream warriors of the 80s. And when I mean dream warriors, we are everybody's dream and your nightmare. Because when we get to doing something in that squirt circle, Mr. Microphone, we take care of business. And that's what it's all about. I'm sick of hearing about this guy's commission, that guy's commission. How about this guy? The most awesome sight you've seen in wrestling today. You won the international. I'm talking about well, I can win anything I want to win. It's only when I want to stop myself because I am the most total machine who had ever come to a wrestling arena, baby. Because when we come together, we know one thing, Mr. Microphone. We are the ultimate in professional wrestling. We're not some fat nightmare, some bald-headed foreign geek and a bunch of mules and a jackass. We are the message of the world today. You know what that is? Look out, baby. This is rock and roll, and it's here to stay. Because the bull is going to have his way. Your head is head. Okay, I want to show the interview uh, with your former party. Oh, I'll take care of it, all right. Well, I'll tell you. Hey, don't cry. Don't cry. Uh, don't you worry about that, friend. I'll tell you, I got enough evidence of that right away and we're talking about what happened to dr d davy go ahead and make the official introduction i'm going to run this interview they can't do anything about it while they're in the ring go ahead all right this is a one fall 10 minute time limit match introducing at 474 pounds from arkansas william the freezer thompson and his partner from memphis tennessee ed maddox going against him at a total weight of 488 pounds from mexico city hector guerrero and in the ring right now, the raging bull, Manny Fernandez from Texas. Boy, he is exactly that. I mean, a bull, a mean one, and this son of a gun is some kind of... Boy, right over the top, and bang, he nails Ed Maddox down there. Here comes Guerrero, and right now, if we can, let's uh, squeeze in. I'd like for you to see the former partner of Hector Guerrero, who got blinded by this Hector's uh, hair... Uh, remover. Let's take a look at it and listen to what he has to say. Well, we, uh, I'm sure everybody has seen the situation that took place with Dr. D in Memphis, Tennessee at Championship Wrestling Television Studios. We wanted to come by and talk to Dr. D. I want to introduce you to him. He is Carl Anderson. He had never before wrestled in the championship wrestling area. He came in, as you know, with Hector Guerrero. And the situation uh, that took place as Hector tried uh, with his Hector hair magic to uh, do some damage on Bill Dundee, it backfired. And uh, you have received a very, very severe injury on your uh, right eye. That's correct. Uh, Hector, he thought that it was, you know, very funny taking his little hair tonic and uh, putting it on somebody's head and removing their hair, which, you know, it's very potent stuff. To, uh, you know, remove hair, it had some kind of acid or something in it. I don't know what it, what, it, what it had in it. I told him that it had no place in wrestling. We was out there to win, was out there to, you know, get, get the job done in the right way. Competition? Yeah, we wasn't out there to, you know, remove hair. That's a barber's job. Right. But it was a situation that took place, and you had told me when we were, were talking before we did this interview that you had even told him when you were telling him that it didn't have any place in wrestling, you had told him that it was a possibility that it got in someone's eye, it could blind them, and it ended up blinding you. That's correct. I had, uh, I lost the right eye on account of this. So I had no vision. Uh, Hector has not been around. He hadn't checked. He hadn't called. He don't care about nothing. He, all he wants is, is fun. All he wants is to be out with his friends. Well, I'll tell you what. I've, I, I got a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of my family and everybody was aggravated that I teamed up with him because they know or had an idea what kind of, you know, what kind of person he was. 
I didn't listen, so I did, you know, I received this injury. And it's, it's not a pretty injury, and it ain't nothing that uh, is, you know, that you can throw off lightly. I haven't got no vision in this right eye. I'll never, I'll never have no vision in this right eye. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I just can't see out of it, and it's all on the, all, all on account of him. It's a bad situation because now he's in a situation where he put you out of the way you made a living, and uh, it's a bad situation. We want to appreciate you uh, coming by, or we want to appreciate you having us come by and uh, talk to you. Thank you very much. I right, appreciate you coming by and checking. Thank you. It's more than he done. Well, there you heard it from Dr. D. Very serious with the eye problem, and uh, right now in the ring, as you've been watching all the time, Hector Guerrero and Manny Fernandez just having fun as they've been inflicting the injury on Ed Maddox, and now the freezer, William Thompson, as Guerrero tags to Manny Fernandez, the bull. No question about this guy's uh, reputation and his record. He is something internationally. They know him everywhere. Look at this. Sailing off that top rope, down with a knee, right down on top of the freezer. And he does a little hot dogging in the ring. Count of one, count of two. That's going to be it. Three minutes, 48 seconds of time on a 348. Manny Fernandez, Hector Guerrero dominating the match. They did, in fact, dominate it all the way as they came up in a little better than three minutes with Remember the win. Lance, if you need any problems, and all you're Just get that stuff him, out of here. Hector's all him around. Okay. Do the trick. Just take it away. We're going to take time out here. We'll be back with more action in a moment. <laughs> match here. The Wilson brothers weigh in a total of 383. David and Benny Wilson going against them from Atlanta, Georgia. A total weight of 454 pounds. Mike Davis and Tommy Lane, the rock and roll RPMs. It's Tommy Lane starting against Benny Wilson. Well, they didn't waste any time getting going against Benny Wilson in here as Tommy Lane grabbed him and hammered him. Tag made. This is Mike Davis. Rock and roll RPMs. They can rest. Well, the size difference isn't the only thing in this match today. There's just so much more experience, and I mean heavy caliber experience on the RPM side that, again, uh, I think we're looking at a... A difficult match to say from the front end it's going to be even. There's no way. The RPM class champions, class in the sense that they have been against the best in the business, and they're in against a couple of young fellas, brothers, uh, Benny and uh, David Wilson. Benny flipped high in the air. Tommy Lane over to pick him up. I think he got the rock and roll RPMs, too. They come in here feeling like they have something to prove. That is that they are still top contenders for the Southern Tag titles. There's a count of three as Mike Davis is able to hold him down for the three count. And Rock and Roll RPM's out of here in a minute, eight seconds with a victory. No, it didn't take him very long, as a matter You're of fact. That's right, it didn't take long. You know something? It seems like every time we get in a battle for our belts, we have to put something up. Last week, we had a thousand dollars. And these two idiots jump us from behind. And by the time I got back, we had three hundred dollars. Midnight Rockers, we're sick and tired of your stipulations. Now what have we got to do now? This time we ain't bringing no money out. Because I got something here worth over a thousand dollars, and when I kick the old lady out on her can, that I kept Lance Russell. Look at that, boy! Huh? Beautiful, beautiful. That's right. right. You ain't gonna get no money, boys. We put this right here up, and you ain't gonna walk out of without it. I guarantee you that. You know something, Lance? They say diamonds are a man's best friend. They used to be a dog, but they found out dogs were nothing good for me, nothing but kicking around. 
just like we're going to do the Midnight Rockers. And right there, get a good look at it. Oh, uh, here they come. Don Michael, right, Marty Gennetti. Midnight Rockers out here, Sean and, and, and Marty. Uh, this is what they're putting up against the titles. Let's see this boy. Let's see if this is something they stopped to pick boy. up. That Pretty good looking out. ring. Yeah, it, it looks right. real good. Where's our buddy Brian Collins? He knows all about this stuff. We like to call him out here and take a look at this. Yeah, man. We, we don't want to call these two guys liars or anything. You got this toothless grinning guy over here. And this poor punk over here. It's not the. It's not that we don't believe you or anything, but we want to have our jewelry here check this out. Hey, Brian, how are you doing? Glad to have you out here. And uh, you are, you're going to check this one to be sure. You're, you're, you're qualified to, yes, to be able yes, to give sir. us an opinion. With Carol Jewelers, I'm quite qualified to tell you if it's real or not. Okay, well, take real to me, though. Yeah, it's a pretty good-looking ring, as a matter of fact. Brian's got his little thingamabob up at his eye, whatever it is. He's checking to be sure. Yeah, the rockers said it's not that we will, don't believe you, but we don't believe you. So take a look at this and let's Definitely see. Real. Huh? Definitely real. At least worth at least a thousand dollars. It is. Yeah. All right. No. Just what they said. It is worth. There's the official right. qualified right. opinion, Brian. Thank you very much for it, Brian. With see? the apparel jewelers. And We're not back jumpers and backstabbers and liars like you two are. Oh. I'll tell you what, old Lane here can't keep his wife at home happy or whatever that woman is he's got there. He's got a, got a ring there on his hand. I'll tell you what, Marty, Marty's not married and I'm not married. I just want to know what we're going to do with a thousand dollar ring. Well, it was your stipulation that they put up something worth a thousand bucks. He's got a lady's ring. ring Lance. He, well, if they beat you, they you lose the, the ring. Now, that's, that's what the stipulation is. You mean it's just that easy? We beat them, we get the ring? Well, that's exactly what it is. They beat you, they get the title. Okay. And we can do what we want with the ring? Certainly, you suggest why don't we just give it out to somebody at the match? How are we going to determine who to give it to? How we, I mean, you think the way it lands in the You mean if you win it, you're just going to give it away? You heard the man say it was worth a thousand bucks. That's right, but we'll give it to somebody there at the match. That's what we'll do, right? That sounds all right. I'll tell you what, the people of the South have been good to the Rockers. We gave them a little payoff last yeah, time of these poor chunks' money. money. What are you going to do? Just walk up and give it to the first girl you see if you win it? If you win it from them? That's that won't be fair. Uh, well, in the program, I, I don't want to tell you what to do. If you can win it, I don't want to tell you what to do. But there's a lucky number in the program, okay. and everybody who has a program has a lucky right, number. That'll work right there. That'll work right there. You know, the Rockers, we've been beating these poor guys senseless all over the South, taking their money, taking their belts. And I tell you what, I'm not going to mind taking your old lady's ring and giving it to some good-looking babe at the matches right now. I'll tell you what, everybody bring their programs, buy their programs. The Rockers are going to draw a number, and whatever, whoever's number gets comes up gets a $1,000 ring from the Midnight Rockers. Well, okay. it's genuinely that, and it'll be an interesting match, to say the least. If the Rockers end up winning it, they get the ring and keep the titles. They've said they're going to give it out to somebody, a selection of the lucky number out of the program. And, of course, if the That's RPMs right. win it, they, they the get the Southern to keep the it's right. It's like everybody else that supports them, so freeloaders all get together and they try to get something somebody else has got. Well, let me tell you something, boy. You ain't going to get it, and you ain't going to give it to no scuzz ball. Let me tell you that right now. All right, all right, all right. Let's well, not let me have just any say fight. one other thing, Lance Russell. Midnight Rockers, pack a lunch, because we may be there an awful long time, and you might get a little hungry. Okay, Southern Belts will be at stake against the uh, against the thousand dollar ring. Talking in the ring, baby. Okay, Marty Janetti, Shawn Michaels, the current Southern Tag Champs, Tommy Lane, Mike Davis, the RPM. It's your ring against the it's our ring, and our ring ain't going nowhere. It's gonna stay right where it's at. And all you freeloaders, all you scuzz balls, you just come on out there, we're gonna beat their brains out. Okay, we'll find that out. That's exactly what the battle is gonna be about. I'm telling you, Dave, it uh, gets more interesting all the time. Let's take out time out now. We'll be back. Got an eight-man match coming up in just a moment. Wednesday night. Friend, I'll tell you what.
but you look down that card and you just got it from stem to stern. You'll be seeing the fabulous one in there against Billy Travis. These are just some of the matches. Southern Tag Team title match. That'll be a dandy. That's the Diamond Ring match with the RPMs going against the Midnight Rockers, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Jimmy Jack Funk defending against Jeff Jarrett. Two referees. You're going to be seeing an AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship match. Boy, I want to see this one. The King going against Bobby Jaggers, particularly after all the things he had to say. That's right, Lance. Wednesday night in Evansville is going to be a big night. Did everybody understand? The, 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 all the girls in that other match, uh, well, I'm going to be down there, too. I'm going to buy myself a program because somebody's going to win a $1,000 diamond ring if the Rockers, uh, if if the Rockers win that match. the RPM. Well, that's, that's, right. that's going to be great. I'll tell you what. And what else is going to be great is the fact that Wednesday night, the time is long past due, that I'm going to get that Southern Heavyweight Championship belt back around my waist. Now, Jaggers was saying that I was beaten for the title. Is that what he said? Yeah, oh, he said you'd been beaten several times. He well, had never been beaten. Let me tell. Let me just refresh his memory. That title was had to be forfeited when Bill and I won the AWA World Tag Team belts. I didn't get beat by anybody for that title. And least of all, not you, Jaggers. When I get you in Evansville, it's going to be the first time that you and I have faced off. And it may not be the last, but I can promise you this. It's going to be one that you'll remember because it'll be the night that you lose the belt for the first time. Oh, yeah. Think of that one. And then turn around and look at this. Bill Dundee will be in there going against Hector Guerrero and Manny Fernandez, and you got yourself quite a partner. That's right, the strongest man I've ever faced. Now, he's just coming down here to punch Brickhouse Brad in the, in the, in the nose. He was going to be there, so I turned to him and I said, Big Bubba, please help me beat up Hector Guerrero and Manny Fernandez. He said, I'd be glad to superstar. He says, because we're both superstars, and this is the biggest superstar I've ever wrestled. And tell him what we're going to do, big boy. That's right, right there in Evansville, Indiana. Let me tell you something. Not only did they take and knock out Brickhouse Brown in the same night, but we had to take two wetbacks from down under there and bury him right there in Evansville. Big expiration of time match coming up here. Eight man tag action, one team in the ring. We're waiting for the others. You hear the music. There's John Michaels, followed by Marty Gennetti, the Midnight Rockers, and their partners, Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis. Across the way, it's King Carl Fergie, Don Bass, and under those hoods, the Executioners, with their manager, Nate, uh, uh, Nathaniel Whitlock, in the corner over here. You see him in the, uh, what is that, a peach-colored jacket he has on? I'm colorblind, Dave, you like to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> In the ring, it's uh, referee Jerry Calhoun trying to get it down to one for each team to start this one. Should right. be interesting. We don't have a whole lot of time, unfortunately. No, you're right. Unfortunately, we don't because we've got to, I don't know the executioners. I do know Bass and Fergie. I certainly know the Midnight Rockers, and I know Jeff and Billy, so we've got quite a team on the other side of it. You know, I, I was not paying attention either. I also noticed that Prince, uh, Don Bass's manager, is, uh, is out here. And uh, King Carl Fergie, so you've got uh, two managers in the corner. The Prince with the commission and Nate the Rat for the executioner. Jeff Jarrett in there against King Carl Fergie. top of it, rolls it down with the arm, sets, and King Carl Fergie has found himself flying all around the ring. Jeff and Billy double up, Fergie off the rope, upper arm, covered by Travis, one, two is all he can get, can't get a three count, Fergie back on his feet, not for long. He, he reached for a tag in the corner, he got it too, one of the executioners coming in. He grabs Travis around the throat. Travis back to the corner of the tag on Marty Gennetti of the Midnight Rockers. He tags Shawn Michaels. Executioner off the rope. Look out. Shawn Michaels flying through the air. Beats him in the middle of the ring. The pitch jumps in. Interferes. Referees calling for the bell. It's going to be a disqualification on Carl Fergie. The Executioner. Everybody in the ring right now. Well, here comes Dundee. Dundee in there. 
before it was uh, actually a six to four situation. Dundee just nails Nate the Rat who went flying out of the ring. Here comes Fernandez, Hector Guerrero in the ring starting to fill up. All kind of folks going at it in there now as the Rockers, Billy. Oh, here comes Big Bubba. It really filled up in a hurry. Referee is going to have any success in stopping this one in a short time. What we've got to do is get ourselves in a position to take a break. We've still got another break to get into as the battle goes on. Dundee and Manny Fernandez across the way. Jeff Jarrett just slammed Prince into the turnbuckle. Don Bass going over after Billy Travis, executioner. Whitlock has been choking Marty Janetti with a cane, and now Janetti's got it. Okay, I'll tell you what we better do. Dundee in the middle of the ring is Hector Guerrero and Dundee are going at it. Goodness gracious, look at the pounding going on. This started out to be an eight-man tag match and now there's... I can't even it. count them. Yeah, there's got to be 15 of them in there anyway. Fernandez out on the floor with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff nailed over towards the desk, comes back at Manny Fernandez. Shawn Michaels over one of the executions. Blasted with a folding metal chair down here. Dundee throws a throws a wooden stool into the ring. Shawn Michaels just nailed one of the executioners with that. But it's a good use too. He nailed him hard. Jeff Jarrett, oh, he blocked King Carl Fergie and slammed Fergie's head into the desk here. They got Guerrero walking around with that cane. Take a break, Dave. This thing goes on. We'll take time out and come back with a close in a moment. Bound to end up with the old tempers just going oh, no. crazy. And <laughs> you end up with a kind of, I kind of like it every now and then, well, as long as we're not involved in it. We almost were a couple of times. Yeah. They were firing people over toward the desk over here. It, it's one of those things, though, that once it gets out of hand, it just seems to expand. And then more and more people kept coming in. And they started out, I think you remarked, with uh, with eight men in there. And before you know, well, nine, including the referee. Before you know it, we've got at least 15 in there. Uh, yeah, well, at other. first, uh, it it was unfair size because Prince and, and uh, Nate the Rat jumped up in the ring, which made it then a total of six guys against four guys. And then here comes Bill Dundee, and he jumped in to help add out. And then Manny Fernandez and Hector Guerrero jumped in. Big Bubba and I don't know who all. I don't, I don't know who all ended up in there, but it was wild out here for, uh, for a while. Finally. Got him, uh, got him back to the dressing room. Other matches today, we had Bobby Jaggers, a hangman, and uh, Jimmy Jack Funk. This is uh, going to be a devastating tag team, I'm afraid, if they stay together in the territory here. They won uh, their match today over uh, Ricky Fontana and, and John Paul. Jaggers and Jimmy Jack Funk, uh, devastating single wrestlers in their own right. Yes, and you put both them both candy. in the ring at the same time, uh, they, are, they are tough. Jerry Lawler, the king, uh, won his match very handily. We mentioned during the match, first thing the Blue Knight did, the bell sounded, and he went over and he punched Lawler right in the side of the face. You don't, I've seen kids do that before, and Lawler will come after you. He did 29 seconds. It took him to count one, two, three, or to get a one, two, three count on the Blue Knight and the victory. Dundee and the Nasty Boys in in a six-man tag team match, getting the victory over the team of Rough and Ready and Keith Robertson. Then it was Manny Fernandez, the Raging Bull, and Hector Guerrero in here, the, the Mexi Mexican connection there, they were calling themselves. Yes. As, uh, as they were going against Freezer Thompson and Ed Maddox, in that one, it was just all Fernandez and Guerrero. They they kind of turned it into a workout, I think. They probably could have gotten a pin earlier than they did, but uh, Fernandez and Guerrero did walk out with the victory. Then it was Rock and Roll RPMs. They came in with a mission, and uh, they pinned the Wilson brothers, uh, David and uh, Benny. Benny, actually, I don't think David was officially in the match uh, there, but uh, they pinned Benny in a little over one minute. Then 
It was that wild eight man that we were talking about a minute ago. Started everybody out, he was in that. Everybody <laughs> involved, as it yeah. turned out. Started out with uh, the Midnight Rockers, Jeff Jarrett, Billy Travis against King Carl Fergie, Don Bass, and the Executioners, and the team of the Midnight Rockers, Jeff Jarrett, and Billy Travis get the win by disqualification. That, my friend, covers it more than handily as you told them all about it. And son of a gun, the thing we got to tell them now is we got to go. See you next week for Dave Brown. Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.